what's up y'all look who's here what's up y'all it is so good to be back i've been gone for a minute because i gave birth to my third baby about one month ago so i've just been recovering we are doing so well and i'm so excited about this video because i'm going to share with you her birth story our labor and delivery it was it was crazy it was special it was i cannot wait to get into it but before we get started uh for those of you who are just not tuning in my name is audrey and my channel is dedicated to Rakan, is dedicated to share my journey and experiences about living on the beautiful island of Rakan after moving here in 2011. so today part of my journey has been uh, the birth of baby number three. So let's get right into it. But before I get into her story, in order for you to understand the circumstances that surrounded this birth, um, I need to tell you about my labor and delivery with baby number one and number two. See, I gave birth to baby number one and baby number two in New York. Both labors were unexpected. I went to my doctor's appointment. It was a normal, a general prenatal checkup. And with both number one and number two, I was dilated five centimeters and did not feel a thing. I mean, when the nurses checked me, they looked at me before they said anything. And I was like, is something wrong? And she said, no, but you're five centimeters dilated. Have you felt no contractions? And I'm like, no, I've been, I've been good. I actually was planning to go home and, and eat and, you know, hang out. But she said, oh, no, no, no. We are going to admit you right now, call your family, bring all of your all of your things. And with baby number two, I didn't expect for that to happen. So I actually had Amino with me when I was in the while I was in labor with baby number two, Akil. Now, since I was already halfway dilated with baby one and two, I didn't get the epidural because I was like, well, I'm halfway here. So let me just uh, let's just, you know, bring it on. So of course with baby number three. Here in Honduras, I'm like, even more reason for me to just give birth over here. Like, I'm not going to stress myself out trying to go to New York and dealing with the COVID and being by myself in the delivery room. So, like, forget it. Let's just do this right here in Honduras. Come on. I'm not new to this. It's number three. <laughs> the thought of me giving birth in Rodan seemed less and less appealing to me. So, I tell my husband, you know what? I, I don't want to be here. I just I don't want to be here right now. I want to go to the mainland. We have a vacation home in the mainland. My husband's side of the family is from the Garifuna village of Santa Fe, better known as Giriga. So I was like, I told him, you know what? There's something different in the air. I just like my spirit is not all here. My mind is not here. I just want to give birth and do my postpartum recovery in Santa Fe. Uh, because I've never been to the hospital here and I wasn't familiar with, you know, the clinics and everything, the first thing I did was consult with the midwife here, who, a, a wonderful woman who happens to be an extended, an extended family member of mine. She's been a midwife for like maybe over 30, 40 years, so she knows what she's doing. So I consulted with her. I consulted with a doctor who actually lived three doors away from us. And I also went to the clinic that I chose to deliver at, and I consulted with the doctor there. And I explained to all three of them my labor stories with baby one and two, and they were all like, okay, you're doing a good job by having a plan B. Uh, you need to plan for giving birth at home if it happens to go that way, because if you reach five centimeters dilated and don't feel no pain, you're the type of woman who would have a, a, a fast delivery and since the hospital is kind of far from your house then yes you need to have a plan b so i created my plan b with the midwife i bought all the things that i needed and i was ready to give birth at home or at the hospital so now let's fast forward to the actual day i gave birth. i was actually filming a video for you guys the night i went into labor um that video i'm going to publish it next week but it's about how i make money bra done okay so that night in the garifuna tradition when it comes to prenatal care garifuna women they induce their labor naturally with castor oil 
Well, I did mine with castor oil. Some people use other stuff. Now, I was I drank the castor oil on a Monday, the t October twenty sixth at seven p.m is when I drank the castor oil. Around 9 o'clock, I was filming my video, and around 11 o'clock, I started to feel the effects of, of the laxative. I, my stomach was like, uh, uh, uh. and so I went to the bathroom, did what I had to do. Around uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, I had to go to the restroom again. At 3 o'clock in the morning is when I began to feel contractions. But the contractions that I felt were Braxton Hicks contractions, or so I thought. But it felt like Braxton Hicks. They were there was no pattern, and it didn't increase in intensity, and I didn't feel any more pressure down there. So I told my husband, I was like, "Baby, I feel contractions, but you know, it's probably just Braxton Hicks." So I got up and I drank some tea, and I went back to bed. So at four o'clock in the morning. I was like, by 4.30, I felt like a kick. But for some reason, I knew it wasn't just a kick. Like, it felt like a hard kick slash contraction. Basically, I was like, okay, babe, this is, I, I think this is it because um, that was a hard contraction now. So all these, all these days for the past, like, month before I gave birth, I was feeling Braxton Hicks contractions. It didn't change. The contractions didn't change in the level of intensity. But that, that one at 4 o'clock, I was like, okay, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. It might be sporadic, but definitely it hurt more than any other contraction I had without. I was in denial when I started having Braxton Hicks contractions, but my subconscious mind knew what was going on because I was telling my husband, babe, did you pack this? Did you pack that? And he was like, are we going to the hospital or what? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm good. Let me just make sure we have everything packed. But I knew something told me that this was it. Like this is still in, at 4.30, 4.45, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of still in denial. And so I felt another contraction. So at this point, I turned the, my, my husband turned on the light and he was like, all right, I'm going to go take a shower. Like we're going to the hospital. I don't care what you're saying. And I'm, I'm sitting in the bed. I'm sitting in the bed still like, uh, you know, should I go? Should I not go? So I told my husband, okay, like, hey, babe, hold on. This is the last test I'm going to do. And if something feels different, then yes, let's go. So I got up. Because all that time I was laying in the bed, I was sitting down. I said, let me stand up and see something. As soon as I stood up, I felt like all of the, the, all of the baby just went down there because I felt so much pressure down there. And I said, oh shit, this is like, this is this is it. This is it, babe. Come on, let's get the car. We gotta go. Like, I gotta start to push this baby out. And I tried to put my, my slippers on, and I couldn't, I felt like somebody added 10 pound weight to each of my legs, because I couldn't pick up my foot to put my slipper on. I'm like, yo, it's time to go. So my husband is like, he's kind of nervous. He, he's like a new it, but I saw it. He was kind of nervous. He's over there packing the, the car. He called his sister to come and stay with the kids. We called the babysitter. And we left all the doors open. We packed the car. At 5 o'clock, um, by 5 o'clock, like right before we got into the car, I noticed I felt something drip. And I'm like, what the hell was this? And when I looked down, there was a little bit of blood. So I was kind of nervous because, remember guys, I never went into a natural labor. Because I was already five centimeters dilated with baby one and two when I went into labor with them, my labor was induced with Pitocin. And so I never knew what it felt like to just labor naturally and your water break. But after reading so many Google and, 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 and speaking to doctors, I knew that when your water broke, it's supposed to be a clear type of liquid. And if there's blood in it, it may or may not be a cause for, for concern. But because the hospital that we chose was is 45 minutes from the house, I was starting to get nervous. So I was like, baby, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's blood. It's not a gush of blood. It's not a gush of blood, but it's you know, it's blood. So let's go. So I, so I got the adult diaper and I, I put it on before I sat in the car for two reasons. Not to mess the car up and also just to monitor how much blood is actually coming out. So, 
as we're driving towards the hospital, I noticed that um, every couple of minutes, a gush of, of something comes out. I'm like, what the heck? But it never was a whole gush of blood. So in my head, I'm like, this just has to be my, my water breaking slowly. So once we're 10 minutes away from the house, my contraction started to come like every four to five minutes. And at this point, I call my mom, I'm like, Ma, my contractions are four to five minutes apart, and we're like half an hour away from the hospital. So I'm, I'm kind of nervous because they're so close together. But then I was remembering my first two labors. By the time my labor reached the point where my contractions were four to five minutes apart, the, the pain of the contractions were way worse than what I was feeling with baby number three. You know, I'm just I'm grabbing my husband's hand a little bit, but I'm not like, ah, you know? So I was like, let's just get to the hospital and see where I'm at. So it's four to five minutes apart, and it, it's more intense than what I felt in the house, but pretty much it was keeping the same level of intensity as we were driving towards the hospital. So something told me, Call the clinic. I told them, tell them that you're on your way. So I called the clinic and I'm like, listen, I'm half an hour away. I'm in labor. My contractions are four to five minutes apart. Can you please have the wheelchair in the front for me when I get there? And please tell the doctor that I'm on my way. So I give them my patient information, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, boom. This is all like between 5, 30, 6 o'clock that we're driving towards the hospital. So we arrive to the hospital at around 6 like 6 10 6 15 and as soon as we arrived the security guard knew that we were coming he had the the wheelchair right there for me so he helped me out of the car got the wheelchair he told me what he saw when the security guard saw how much pain i was in he told my husband leave the car he left the car doors open he said go inside register your wife and i'm going to wheel her into the nurses so my husband is registering me and the nurses take me straight to triage and the first thing they do is they check my cervix and they're like, oh my gosh. I'm like, what? Don't do that. I'm like, I'm in labor. Don't, don't just say, oh my gosh. And she's like, what happened? And she says, you're, you're about to give birth. I'm like, how am I about to give birth like, right now? Right now? And she's like, yes, you're seven and a half centimeters dilated. I'm like, well, I'm, I feel the pain. I feel the contractions. But they're not nearly as bad as the pain I felt when I was in labor with the one and two. So how is it that I'm right about to give birth? And she's like, okay, now the nurses are I'm looking kind of scared because the, she's saying I'm about to give birth. And so she sends one nurse to get my to get the needle so they can start doing my blood work. And she sends another nurse to get something else, to get the doctor. And so she's checking me and my contractions are getting really bad at this moment to the point where I cannot talk through the contractions. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I think she's right because when I felt this level of contractions with the babies, uh, one and two, it was because I was about to push. So maybe she's right. And so she tells my husband, get the baby's clothes. And she, she's making me nervous because she's like, you know, rushing. And then I see my husband getting nervous. And he's, and in my head, I'm, I'm still like in, in some type of denial. Like, what you mean with the baby's clothes? Like, you really, I'm really about to push. So, and so she tells me, okay, we have to get you into labor and delivery now. Put on this robe and get in the wheelchair. Come on, let me help you get in the wheelchair so I can take you to labor and delivery. So I get in the wheelchair and I'm like, oh my God, I got I got poop. And she's like, oh no, mama, that, that's not poop. That's the baby. Don't push. We're going to get you to labor and delivery now. I'm like, what? So the, the nurse builds me into labor and delivery, puts me on the bed. The doctor's there. He's like, put one leg here, one leg there. You know how they have those the stands for your leg? And I'm like, what you mean? Like, it's time? And he's like, yes. <laughs> because you guys got to understand, I'm comparing labor number three to one and two. And with one and two, when, when I was at the level of pain that I was feeling with number three, I had about an hour left before it was time to push. So I was like, it's, it's just happening too fast. But, you know, God has his plan, so I'm not going to fight it. So all I did was put my leg up, the left leg, the right leg, 
And I immediately, like one minute later, I felt the baby crowning. Like my husband almost missed it because he was doing the paperwork. And I'm like, where's my husband? He needs to be here. He needs to be here. And when the nurse was like, don't worry, tranquila, tranquila, ya, ya viene, ya viene. So she calls my husband and puts him in the, you know, the biosecurity suit. As soon as he walks in, like the baby is crowning. Like, I, I felt that, I was like, oh shit, like the doctor was right, the baby is right here. Time check, it's not even seven o'clock in the morning yet. So I feel the ring of fire and I'm like, oh shit, it's showtime, it's time, let's, let's do this, I'm ready, I, I'm built for this. Let me push this baby out. So when you feel that ring of fire, the first thing you want to do is just push like in the movies. Shout out to my husband. My husband is the real MVP because he knew how traumatized I was about tearing because he knows the baby number one, I tore really bad to the point where I could not sit down for like a whole week. And with baby number two, I didn't tear as bad, but I did tear, but at least I could sit down. So with baby number three, I did so much research about uh, preventative measures to tear and all this stuff. And I would have these conversations with him and most of the time he would be half asleep, so I didn't know he actually paid attention. So as I'm crowning, and he's, he's, you know, I'm like, ah! He's like, babe, hold on, don't push. Like, remember the video, you have to take your time. And he's like coaching me through the pushing process. So shout out to my husband because thanks to him and the wonderful doctor, the nurses, your girl did not tear at all. Like, my husband is the real MVP. So, I pushed out my baby at 6.47 a.m. So, I'm like, I'm going through an adrenaline rush right now. Between me leaving the house and arriving to the hospital it was like maybe an hour and 20 minutes. And in all of that time, all of this happened, like contractions, the car drive, the nurses. I gave birth to my baby within half an hour of arriving to the hospital. So, thank God, because he knew how to organize everything so precisely so that I would not give birth inside of the car. Because if I would have waited half an hour later, that's it. That baby would have been born in the car or in the house. So, after I push the baby out, I go into the recovery room. And I think I'm going through an adrenaline rush because of how fast everything happened. Because even the nurses, when she walked in the room, she was like, Mama. You have to lay down. You just gave birth. And I'm like, I'm literally sitting up like this, like, like I can't believe this just happened. I can't believe I'm sitting and I'm not in so much pain. I can't believe like my baby is right here. I can't believe that everything happened so fast. Like, like I just I couldn't believe. So my body had not like it, it, I couldn't relax. I was, you know, sitting up and just watching the baby. I was just in this disbelief, but I was shocked. So here is my third bundle of joy, Miss Amira Rose Amaya. She came in weighing nine pounds, two ounces, and 20 inches long. Big high street. So as I'm sitting on the hospital bed reflecting on, on this wonderful labor experience, I had to think, you know, if I had to do it again a fourth time, and her, which I'm not, <laughs> uh, if, but if I had to do it again a fourth time, I would not get, I would not mind giving birth to Honduras. I believe that my initial fears and, and concerns about giving birth to Honduras came from the fears of, of other people, and that that fear, at least for my, for me, it came a lot came from a, a place of ignorance. You know. If you just don't know, you just don't know it, and you're left to just invest things in your head. So that's one of the reasons why before I made my final decision, I did a lot of research. The best part about giving birth in Honduras is definitely the postpartum recovery. So like I told you guys in the beginning, I'm I'm Gary, I'm Gary for now. And my postpartum recovery was done in my husband's village, the Gayuna town of Santa Fe. So postpartum recovery here is taken very seriously. And, and with baby number one and two, I, I gave birth in New York. And although my parents are Karifuna, there's certain traditions that we just follow. So my mom tried her best and, and my sisters and them. And you know, it was great in New York. But uh, the postpartum, my postpartum recovery experience here in Honduras is 
like super amazing. I, a week after giving birth, I felt so much better mentally, spiritually, physically. So I'm actually doing a video about that for those of you who are interested in the Ganifuna postpartum recovery. For those of you who don't know who Ganifuna people are, I'm going to put a link to the video that I made. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. This was such an amazing experience. I really enjoyed sharing this with you guys. Um, if you have any questions to all my mamas or mama to mamas to be who are thinking about giving birth outside of the US, let me know. Put the questions in the comments section below or send me an email or hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. All right, thank you for watching, guys. I'm gonna go tend to my little one right now. Bye.